Alumni is a reflection of an institution's past, a representation of its present and a link to its future. A very good evening and a warm welcome to the first alumni interactive session of Indian School Sulala Jayanj 2021. We all know that alumni are the brand ambassadors of an institution. A strong and positive relationship with alumni can benefit an institution socially, academically, and professionally. They are a huge talent pool whose guidance can be beneficial to many students in their respective areas of study. Today, we the students of classes 10 and 12 are fortunate to interact with the alumna, Ms. Julie Anthony, who is currently working as an engineer in the US. Ma'am, it is our pleasure to have you with us today. Sure. Prayer can induce a happier mood and provide a positive pathway. It can get your mind, your spirit, and your body right. So let's begin this session by invoking the blessings of God. Welcome can make one feel at home. Now, may I request Kashif to deliver the formal welcome address. To Ira, simplicity makes you more attractive. Many great leaders or dignitaries are the perfect combinations of simplicity and perfection. Good evening, all. On behalf of Indian School Salala, it gives me immense pleasure to welcome these simple yet great personalities to this interactive session. An effective alumni relationship with their alma mater begins with providing a successful experience to the students. And today we have our alumna, Ms. Julie Anthony, who will be sharing her success story with us. Hello. It's my privilege and honor to welcome Ms. Julie, who has brought great glory to our institution through her noble deeds. Ma'am, hearty welcome to Jayanj 2021. Next, I extend my sincere welcome to Dr. Sayyad Ehsan Jamil, President of the School Management Committee, who is an empowering leader and an academician par excellence. My cordial welcome to the other esteemed members of the School Management Committee who deliver their best to Indian School Salala. With great pleasure, I welcome the captain of our ship, the very devoted and committed principal, Mr. Deepak Patankar, who motivates us to overcome the challenges and move forward to achieve success. A genial welcome to the dedicated assistant vice principal, Mrs. Ananta Lakshmi, and our dear teachers to this session. Last but not the least, I would like to cordially welcome my dear friends of classes 10 and 12 to this enriching and interactive session. Once again, I extend my wholehearted welcome to all those who have joined us. 
Thank you. Thank you, Kashif. One of the best things that you could ever do for your life is to follow your passion, turn it into a dream, and introduce it to the light of reality. Now let me invite Jarina to introduce our Elmina, who has been successful in pursuing her dreams. Good evening, dear friends. I'm extremely delighted to introduce the speaker of the day, Mrs. Julie Anthony, our alumina of 1997 batch. Mrs. Julie Anthony is an engineering graduate and MBA holder from the USA, currently working in Seattle, USA as a project lead in Mindtree while consulting for Microsoft for the past 17 years. She has a dance school where she teaches classical dance forms like Bharatanatyam, folk, contemporary, and semi-classical fusion, and herself is enrolled as a student of Mohiniyattam in a dance school in US. She believes in giving back to the community, which has encouraged her to be involved in many community events. The one to highlight is a fundraiser show that she led with almost 80 dancers way back in the year 2014. The show generated around $14,000, which was don donated to Dr. Sunita Krishnan's Institute called Prajwala that caters to women and children who are victims of human trafficking. This gesture of hers truly reflects her genuine mindset to serve the community. I'm extremely happy to say that this former student of Indian schools, Lala, has bought laurels to her school during her school days. She backed the third position in her class for class 12 board examination in 1994. She had won prizes for dance during inter house competitions at school and also for other arts and literary events. She was also the captain of Greenhouse for two years. She was very active in sports during her college days and had won prizes for both intra and inter college fairs. Presently, she is settled in the US and is a very active member of the US Indian community. Her success journey will be of a great learning and inspiration to all of us. That was a perfect introduction. Thank you, Jarina. Finding your passion and purpose in life feels liberating and extremely satisfying. And working on something you love can even get you in the flow without ever feeling drained or depressed. It makes you much more productive and happier. So now let's hear from our alumna, Ms. Julie Anthony, who has been successful in pursuing her dreams through her dedication, hard work and commitment. Ma'am, please. Sure. Um, can you all hear me? Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Ma okay. Thank you. Um, respected Principal, Mr. Deepak Patankar, AVP, HOD, uh, the teaching staff of ISIS and the non-teaching staff, the school management committee, and the president, Dr. Jamil. Uh, it's my honor and privilege to address the batches of 10th and 12th for the year 2021. Uh, honestly, I feel like um, I feel the same shiver that I felt years ago, uh, standing in front of the mic uh, 25 years ago uh, for the school morning assembly. And especially when you played that prayer song that literally gave me goosebumps. Um, the feeling is so surreal and uh, uh, it's kind of like a deja vu uh, and yet it's so beautiful, uh, I should admit. And thank you so much for having me. It is indeed such an honor to come back to my alma mater and talk to you all. So the title of my talk today says, uh, How to Chase Your Dreams. Um, I'm not sure how well I can explain this in 30 minutes that we have because there is no such... Um, ready-made, there's no such uh, ready-made uh, capsule for this. I'm going to share my uh, experience that I faced uh, over during my life. And uh, and after after I talk, we can have a QA. and a uh, And I guess that's where you can ask your questions and we'll go from there, right? 
So that's how the agenda will look like. So let me start about how the school uh, made a difference in my life, right? So as mentioned by Kashiv, I think, uh, who gave the intro. I belong to the class of, uh, I'm the proud member of class of 97. That's when I finished my 12th, 1997. I was born in the Sultan Kabus Hospital in Salala. I was born and raised in Salala. I studied from nursery until 12th in Indian school Salala. And uh, I'm very grateful to all my teachers who influenced me right from nursery to the 12th. Um, the, the number of teachers are many, so if I were to list them, it's really a long list. Uh, but I would like to call out a few teachers who were present then and who are very much active and rocking right now in school. Um, Mrs. Puni Bhaskar, my dear uh, PE ma'am, and uh, Mr. Parvinder sir, Mr. Bala sir, and uh, Mrs. Lobo. Uh, and of course, I know that uh, Ismail uncle is still there in the non-teaching staff and he was there then as well. So a huge hi, a huge uh, uh, hi to all of you. Um, I'm very grateful to all my teachers who influenced me. And, you know, back then, our school was very small. Everyone knew everyone. Uh, and it was like if a student got a new bag, um, most of this, uh, you know, this, the teachers would know about it. Because in my class in 12th, when I graduated out, um, it was just one class and uh, we were just 15 to 17 of us. That's it, right? I know right now we have several divisions. Um, I still remember when one of the teachers um, who had cleared his, uh, his or hers, I don't remember whether it was a male or female, but had cleared the driving license exam and threw a party to the teachers uh, during recess. Uh, this was big news. And everyone in the school, all the students knew about it because uh, you could see all the teachers going through the, uh, we had something called the AV room. I don't know if you still have, the, the, have that right now, but uh, they went there. So keeping a secret uh, back then was kind of impossible, right? So, so it was a very nice, uh, it was a very close knit and a small family, I should say. Uh, that's, that's my remembrance of the school. Um, I use this has uh, given me uh, enormous values in life uh, and a uh, few of them are how to be disciplined, how to be courageous, uh, hard work, punctuality, uh, determination, um, kindness and patience and forgiveness. This, this list again is endless and I am what I am today is because of my teachers at school. I proudly say that with all my uh, might. Uh, one thing, one key thing that I would like to highlight today is how the school taught us the importance of being open to all cultures. Uh, we used to celebrate all the festivals with the same zest, be it uh, Onam or Diwali or uh, Eid or Christmas or Pongal uh, or whatnot. Uh, you know, during our morning assembly, we prayed to just one God, uh, the Almighty. Um, our teachers taught us uh, to respect and appreciate all kinds of faith. Uh, our, our school uh, taught us to treat everyone with the same dignity. Um, we were taught to respect everybody's ways of life. And we were taught not to think that our ways are superior to someone, uh, to someone else's ways, right? So dear children, I cannot stress how important this is. This may sound very cliche to you right now, but the world that we live in right now, unfortunately is so divided. It's so scary. Um, we have, there is division based on religion. There is division based on political views. There is division based on culture, on race, on gender, you name it and there is division. Um, and we would think that the educated people would get it right, but unfortunately that is not the case. And uh, that's when we realize the importance of uh, education and the importance of knowledge, right? Education is one thing and knowledge is something else. Um, we see these heated debates in social media and it's, it's really sad. So one thing I want to we all to understand is, you know, your, your well-being, your current well-being, your current circumstance, your society, 
all of this is going to change very soon. Once you graduate out of 12th and you leave Salala, you're going to be in a different place. This is one learning that I sincerely request you all to carry through your life um, on how to treat everyone equally, irrespective of what background they come from, right? That is my honest request. Next, we uh, I would like to talk about the life after 12th, right? So after 12th, you go to college. And um, uh, one thing to note is, you know, why we we are in Salala, while I we were in Salala, for me it is words, past tense. Um, we are brought up in this bubble with a lot of care and protection under the guidance of our parents. We are um, always under the um, uh, under the protection of our teachers, under the care of our friends and families. It is nice, this nice little innocent bubble, right? We are suddenly picked from there and we are dropped in a no man's land where the culture is different, where the language is different, the ways of thinking is different, people are different, each and everything is different. How do you survive that? So one of the main thing that I have felt from my experience, from my life experiences, three points I have to share here. The first point, first and foremost, make sure that you find the right set of friends. Um, they are instrumental in shaping the kind of person you're going to be. They will define you. They will define your thinking. And the right company matters so much that I can't stress that enough. Of course, you have to have the right mindset uh, and the, make the right judgment call to find the right company. Um, and I hope you all have that. But uh, friends are, they, they really mold you and they define you how you're going to be later on in life. Uh, one example I would like to share is about how my, uh, I had my mom, she's no more, uh, she was detected with lymphoma, uh, it's a cancer, and uh, she was getting treated in Bombay. So after 12th, I went to Bombay. I was in uh, Mumbai. I did my engineering in uh, University of Mumbai. I was there for, in Bombay for four years. Uh, that's where I did my bachelor's. So my mom was detected and um, uh, with this illness and her treatment was happening in Bombay. I was the one who was taking care of her because my dad couldn't come down each time. Um, he was still working in Salala, so he couldn't come down every time. So managing her, her treatment and college uh, was not easy. Engineering itself is, was really heavy. It took a toll. And um, there were times I missed classes. There were times I, could, I had to miss assignments. All of this time, it was my friends that uh, whom I relied on for everything. And uh, they helped me um, sail through engineering really smoothly. And I owe it to them big time in life, right? So the second thing I would like to highlight is trust your instinct. Um, you don't, it's, it's so important to follow what your heart says. And sometimes that may not be the right choice. Uh, sometimes the right choices are not the happiest ones, but usually your instinct is never wrong. So trust that and go by that, right? Third point, third point I would like to make is about how to be in touch with your parents. Ultimately, they are the pillars of your support. They may not be there with you. Now, this is mainly for the students of 12th and the 10th, eventually when you reach 12th and you uh, come out of Salala, your parents may not be there with you. How do you keep that connect? Talk to them regularly, uh, share with them all your ups and downs, all the good things and the bad things, right? Uh, you have to remember that they, if there's anybody in this world, there are any two people in this world who wish the best out of you, those are your parents. So keep them informed and keep them updated and keep them engaged and share your worries and your sorrows and your happiness with them regularly. And I'm sure you'll do well. So these are the three good points I would like to highlight. Of course, like I said, you know, I can go on and on about this, but I'm just condensing it and filtering out what I felt from my life, right? And I'm sharing with you. Now, coming to the main crux of the topic, how to chase your dreams. Um, I would like to begin by quoting Dr. Abdul Kalam here. Dream is not something that you see while you're sleeping. It is something that should not let you sleep. 
I find this so apt and so meaningful because this is exactly what I went through when I was busy transforming my dreams to realities. Tons of sleepless, sleepless nights, I swear. So these, these ideas would create so much excited, excitement in me that I would be making plans um, while trying to get some sleep. I wouldn't get sleep uh, because it would haunt me, haunt me in a good way, I should say, right? So I would, I have um, seven points for you on how to chase your dreams. And why seven? Because seven is my lucky number. <laughs> Just kidding. Seven, because uh, like I said, the, the list can be really huge, but here I'm just uh, condensing it to uh, what I feel, uh, um, uh, what I feel important, what I feel is important and it can be beneficial for you as well, right? So the first point, chasing your dream. The first point, what could it be? Believing in yourself, right? You have to realize that everyone has the right to dream, be it big or small. You have to understand your worth. If you don't understand it, who will understand that, right? You have to realize that you need to be self-motivated and love yourself and believe in yourself. Know yourself very well. Now, it is not easy to know what you want. It is, it is, it's easy said and said than done, but to understand what you want is a very tough thing, you know. So to have the conviction that you can do it. Be your own cheerleader. Be fearless, right? Most often, we don't allow us ourselves to dream limitlessly. We think we're not worth it. We, we put restrictions on ourselves. Um, don't do that, right? Uh, think you're worth every bit of it. And you might have heard this before. If you believe you can, you're right. And if you believe you can't, you're still right. So understand one thing that the only thing that you need to wear well is your confidence. Nothing else matters, right? Now, by believing in self, what's the other, the next step? Point number two, to chase your dream, to finish it, what do you need? It's perseverance. When you start something at first, you may not get all the answers that you need right away. So to achieve a goal, for example, you may have 25 steps ahead of you, right? Uh, step one, step two. At the beginning, you may not get, you may not have the clarity of what you need to do in the 21st step or the 22nd step. And that's okay, right? That's, that's very normal. And you take it one step at a time. You take baby steps. You conquer one step at a time. And as you work through your list, your path will clear on its own. And this is perseverance. So the drive that you need to finish what you started, that is perseverance. Always remember, it doesn't matter how you started. What matters is how you finished. You might have heard this. And if you haven't, this is a very good life lesson. Always remember how you started. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter how you started. It, it matters how you finish. And you have to finish in style, right? And one example I would like to talk about is here is uh, something that uh, um, I believe uh, Kashiv mentioned at the beginning regarding the fundraiser show that we did. So dancing is my, um, I'm a diehard, I'm um, very passionate about dancing and it's one of my strongest passion. And after coming here to the US uh, in 2002, I was fortunate to meet a bunch of ladies and uh, who had the similar thinking and we, formed this dance team and we used to perform everywhere. Uh, we performed for many programs in the Indian community and it was very well received. And our team was very small, we were just 10 of us. And back in 2014 is, one of our, is when one of our well wishes uh, suggested to us, why don't you use this talent of yours for something bigger, right? So that's when this um, seed was sowed to, to plan a fundraiser on a very large scale for a cause right? Use your talent for a cause. So we had no idea how to go about this because our, our group was so tiny. We held auditions, we got, uh, we recruited lots more dancers and other performers. So the show was a combination of music as well. We had musicians. Ultimately, the show happened. We had almost uh, close to 100 participants in the show, including dancers and musicians. And we raised almost uh, uh, 14,000, actually it was 20,000. So that number was a little wrong. It was 20,000. We had to use a little bit for, to cover the administrative expense, but 
this was a huge amount that we raised and this was donated to Dr. Sunita Krishnan who runs Prajwala, it's an NGO in India uh, who takes care of victims of uh, human trafficking, mainly women and children. So when we started this venture, we didn't know we didn't know how we didn't know answers to a lot of things, but it's perseverance that 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 uh, helped us to finish in style to finish the project that we started. Right. So um, this is something I would really this is something that's really important for you all to understand. Point number three. It's about the opportunities that you need to be open and be adventurous about. Right. So I talked about this example. This was an opportunity that came into our, into our hand and we took it. We gladly took it. So many of us, these, these opportunities are a very funny thing, right? They don't come to you all the time. But when they come, uh, you have to make sure that you grab them and make the best use of them. You have to make sure that you work really hard and squeeze every drop out of these opportunities. For example, say you love writing, right? and uh, you used to write uh, while in school and say you got to college uh, after 12th you reach college and uh, you see that there's a possibility to start a writing club it's a brilliant idea and uh, there is no club there is no club that is associated with writing and you see the opportunity and you go you decide to start it and you go for it <laughs> You talk to your friends, you gauge their interests, and you establish a forum. You may you may not have enough uh, interest in the beginning to join, but you got to be patient and see how the idea grows. Right? Eventually, it will grow, and you will um, you will gauge enough interest, and you will be successful. So something small like this. So this is an opportunity that that you should grab on and be greedy for your ambitions, be greedy for yourself. There is no harm. As long as you're not harming anybody in the process, you should seize the opportunity and make it happen, right? Now, while you go after opportunities, one thing to notice is definitely there are risks. You will soon, um, you all will soon choose your paths and at, say at one point you want to do something that you've never done before there is risk associated with it and that comes that comes with the package right nothing is risk free uh to always remember to get something that you never had you have to do something that you never did i don't know if you have heard this but i find this so useful the fear of the risk should not keep you from trying should not prevent you from trying new things you know, we're often scared that trying that it will try something, thinking that it's not familiar for the for us, and we we fear that we may fail. So one thing to remember is, no matter how many mistakes you make, or how slow your progress is, you are still far ahead of those who are not trying, right? So take that risk. It's okay. Um, don't don't be afraid. One example I would like to give here is. Um, as um, they mentioned in my introduction, I'm a software engineer by, my, by profession. I came here, I've been working uh, in Mindtree consulting for Microsoft for almost 15 to 17 years, uh, and I'm a pro program manager. Uh, my, my passionate hobbies include dancing. And for the past three, four years, and I've been dancing, a bit, I've continued my passion this ever since I came to US, there's not been a single year that I've not danced. I've been dancing probably more than what I was dancing in school. Like I have my students and I do shows. Now, for the past three, four years ago, I had this uh, weird interest. Um, I shouldn't call it weird, uh, but a different interest of uh, doing a short film. I wanted to write and direct a short film. I had no experience of filmmaking. I didn't know anything about what it takes to write a film, what it takes to write a script, what it takes to direct a movie. I had no idea. No one in my family or my extended family have any experience to filmmaking or are no one is into the film industry. But I was, I just wanted to do it. Um, it was a big risk I knew that I was taking because I'm going into the unknown, something I really don't know. I knew I had to um, educate myself. I took some, there's this thing called masterclass online. 
um, I subscribed to that. I was a member and I took some of the classes. I was listening to all these uh, big directors speak, uh, Mira Nair, for example. That was motivating for me. That hugely helped me. Of course, my my ideal uh, goal, my ideal goal was to quit everything that I have and go to New York Film Institute and get enrolled there. But of course, um, that wasn't a practical solution because I have my family here, I have my kids here. So um, leaving them and going was not practical. So this is something that I thought I can do while I manage my 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 work and my family and still I wanted to do this. So I started writing the script. I hit upon a story two years ago um, and I was so moved by it and I wanted to make that into a film. And I started writing my story. I started writing my script. I started talking to uh, people who are uh, experienced in this field and I got a lot of guidance from them. And we started, uh, I, uh, you know, we had uh, the cast ready and we started the shoot. Uh, shoot was over. We started, I started working with my editor for the, uh, started editing the scenes. Uh, music was done. Finally, we released the film in 2020 uh, on June. In June is when we released. Uh, they, we had to delay it a little bit because of COVID. And um, it was received very well. Right now, this film is there on Amazon Prime, and I'm very proud about it. Uh, we also won a few awards in a film festival recently for uh, the best film. And uh, also my lead actress won the best actress for the film in a film festival. So um, from something that I absolutely had no idea about, I went to this. So this is... This is something that is very close to my heart, this experience that I went through. And it, I knew I was taking a huge risk. I knew this is something that I had no idea about, but um, I was so convinced that I wanted to do it and I went ahead and did it, right? So that is risk, risk taking. Now, this brings me to point number five, which is with risk comes failure, right? Um, now, this probably was not something that you all expected to hear, but uh, we all will fail someday in our lives, someday, and that is bound to happen. However great you are or however successful you are right now, it will not matter. You will fail at some point in your life. Now, we all hate to fail. We dread it and we don't welcome it one bit. But uh, the, the question remains, the question, the most important question to ask is, what do you do after you fail? What do you do? This, my friends, will define where you go, right? You analyze what went wrong. You pick yourself up and you move ahead. You should, you should rise like a phoenix, you should, as strong as ever. One failure should not define you. You take it as a lesson learned and success will start tasting even sweeter once you have tasted failure. Um, I have a very good example here to share. This is again from my personal life. During uh, one point in my engineering, I was ready to quit. This was in second year. And uh, back in school, back in school as one of the uh, uh, introductory speakers said, I scored very well. I was always in the top three or the top five of my class. I was like the best student. I was teacher's pet. I was the example for everybody. I didn't know what failure is like. I used to excel in almost everything I did. Um, and here comes college and uh, college was tough. The subjects were very different than uh, uh, what I saw before. I struggled and there was this subject called engineering drawing which I failed three times. Yes, not once, not twice, thrice. After failing the third time, I realized that this is not for me. Engineering is not for me. I'm going to quit. I was boiling and I was, I was such a mess. I wanted to quit and I wanted to go back to my parents who were still in Salana. I spoke to them over the phone. I said, just book my tickets. I want to come back because I, I cannot stay here. Um, at that time, what 
made me change my decision was my friends. That is why I said how important they are earlier. They convinced me that, they convinced me to stay. They convinced me that one subject like engineering drawing should not define my life. That should not take control of my life. It is one exam. Learn, uh, fight it and give it, give the fourth attempt and conquer it. They gave me the courage to do that. And um, I was convinced it took a lot of, it took a few days, but I was convinced. And I decided, fine, I'll fight back. And I decided to stay. I joined uh, some few extra coaching classes for the subject. I used to fear the subject. I used to dread it because I never understood that subject, right? Um, but I started attending this uh, classes and I started loving the subject. I started uh, figuring it out. Um, maybe it was the teacher or maybe it was the new, the ways of learning or I don't know what, but I started loving the subject and I started enjoying doing the practice uh, um, tests and exams, right? The exam happened. I knew I'm definitely going to pass. I just not just did pass. I scored in 75 in engineering is actually a big deal. So I was very proud of myself uh, because I came out of it and I did not um, uh, let one subject take control of me. Uh, I was really on the verge of quitting, trust me. And um, I, I didn't, I, I was such a mess, but I realized thanks to my friends, uh, I, again, I owe it to them. I, uh, I decided to stay and I decided to conquer it. And I did not let that one failure define my future, right? So be ready to fail. The most important lesson that you have to think is, to, you have to remember is how you perform after that. Pick yourself up and go for it, right? Um, now, that brings me to the sixth point. Get surrounded by people who wish the best out of you. Uh, friends, again, um, like I said in this example that I gave, uh, associated, you know, they were the reason that I decided I was able to stay and continue my uh, journey in engineering. Associate yourself with positive energy and thoughts. When you're surrounded by people who wish the best out of you, you know you're in good hands. And of course, you need to have, like I said before, the right judgment calls. You should be wise enough to make the right judgment call. Um, here I'm quoting one of the famous novelists, uh, Paulo Coelho. If you desire something very strongly, the whole universe will conspire in helping you achieve it. This is so true, my friends. This is so true. So when you have a good team that is supporting you, a good set of friends that's supporting you, um, you are always in safe hands. Uh, you are in the right spirits, and you know that you are you. Uh, only goodness will happen to you. So usually, people talk about the ones who are by your side in tough times. In my experience, that is not a hard one. You will always get help when you're depressed. You'll always get help when you're upset. You will be surrounded by people when you're upset, but. The ones to watch out for are the ones who keep you genuinely happy when you succeed in something. Those, my friends, are the keepers. So watch out for those and uh, who are willingly, um, genuinely happy to share the success that you have, right? Those are your real keepers, right? So always remember, keep surrounded, always surround yourself with good, positive energy and people. Last but not the least, the seventh point, fend off negativity. If someone tells you your dream is unrealistic, that is a sure sign that you should go for it. That alone should be your motivation to go for it. You should have control of what kind of energy that you let inside your life, right? You know, our brains, our brains are very tricky phenomena. It's a very, very complicated organ in our body. They are shaped by the thoughts and experience that you feed in. What do you absorb inside is what your brain will take in, right? And negativity is one of the most toxic forces on the planet. Uh, remember this, whatever you do in life, you can never please everyone. Someone or the other will always have a problem with what you're doing. 
someone or the other will always be upset in what you're doing. Now, caution here, whatever you do, make sure that you do not harm anybody, right? Uh, but as long as you don't harm anybody, you're fine. But don't let anyone dictate to you on how you should dream. No one has the right to do that. You own your life. You own your dreams. Your dreams are yours. If you want to achieve them, who will? If you won't fight for your dreams, who will, right? So fend off that negativity, stay positive, and ignore what needs to be ignored, and only fill yourself with positive energy and encouragement and move forward, okay? So with this, I conclude my seven steps to chase your dreams. Hope that was helpful. I have a concluding statement to make, which is actually an excerpt from uh, a speech by Denzel Washington. So imagine you're on your deathbed, okay? And you are surrounded by ghosts. Now these ghosts uh, represent the ideas that you never acted upon. These ghosts represent the talents that you didn't use. These ghosts represent the passion that you always had, but you, you didn't follow. They're standing around you, your bed, very angry, disappointed and upset, right? And they say, we came to you and you could have brought us to life. Now we have to go to the grave together with you. Uh, for no fault of ours, we are coming with you to the grave. They're upset and they're surrounded and you are surrounded by them. So I stand here before you asking you this one question. How many ghosts are you going to have around your bed when your time comes? Think about it. Thank you, everyone. That concludes my speech. Now we can go to the Q&A se uh, session. Um, I don't know who will be taking over, but yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Your courage, confidence, and optimistic approach is really an inspiration for all of us. The experience of pursuing our dreams is often more rewarding and more enlightening than the achievement of our dreams themselves. How to pursue our dreams is always a matter of dilemma. And this is very evident from the number of questions that we received from our friends of classes 10 and 12. It is hard to incorporate all those questions in the session due to time constraint. So we have chosen a few from the list for you to answer, and we are confident that your experience and knowledge can definitely guide us. So now let's begin with the much awaited interactive session. Ma'am, the first question for you is, what is the biggest factor that has helped you to be successful? The biggest factor is definitely self-motivation. Right, so you need to be self-motivated to uh, achieve anything. If you are not self-motivated and if you don't have the self driving you, um, the rest of the factors has to, they have to follow. There is no point in having, there's no point in being very talented and uh, you have to use that talent. There is no point in having a very strong passion for something, you have to use it. For that, you have to be self-motivated. So self -drive, being self-driven and being self-motivated is really key, I think, and that is one of the key things. That is a very good point, ma'am. Ma'am, the next question we have is, what was the hardest decision you ever made? Hardest decision? So um, in, in, in my career, in my, um, uh, at my workplace, um, we, I, I was, so I keep moving projects, right? I'm not stuck in one project. I, they, they transfer me to certain projects after a certain duration of time. So I was going to take this new project I was told to take. Um, and I was given two options. I could choose project A or project B. And I was told that project A has got a lot of challenges. It had, I had to lead a, a big team of around 10 to 15 uh, people. Uh, and many of them had a lot of issues. There were a lot of political 
issues going on in the in the team and they wanted somebody to lead the team and uh, um, to to lead them in the right way so the team had a lot of challenges that was project a and i knew and the challenges were very there were a lot of it it's hard to describe all of it right now but a lot of it had got to do with people's problems right and uh, i was also given the option of uh, uh, project b which was a very straightforward one which did not have any issues but because i like to take challenges i chose to go with project a and um, it was really hell for me it was one of the most toughest project that i ever joined in my career and um, i i tried i i don't know if i succeeded because i couldn't uh, it was hard to be there in that team and after 3 4 months i had to quit i had to come out of that project um because the situation and the circumstances were not improving so i don't know if i failed there but at least i can be happy that i tried so that was one of the hardest decision i should say because knowingly i went into something that is very hard so um because i like to take challenges so i think that was in my career maybe that was the hardest one yes ma'am surely we have to challenge ourselves and brave the challenges in our life ma'am our next question to you would be what are the opportunities and expectations for nris in usa so you know us compared to the rest of the countries has definitely a broader set of opportunities when it comes to the different uh, workforces that we have here right it's very diverse and us is definitely welcoming uh, students from all over the world uh to for a higher education here uh but of course one thing to note is the um the work life balance that we have here it's it's very different um i know that the work life balance in europe or australia for that matter is much better uh but then of course the pay here the it's very lucrative and uh, the options is very diverse uh for you students uh, uh from my experience what i've seen is one of the one of the i shouldn't say easiest but one of the most common way that students come here for higher aspirations is after their uh bachelors they finish in india and they come for masters and masters uh doesn't have to be in uh, your technical field it can be in your management side it can be an mba they come here for to pursue higher studies and they do their internship and uh, they uh you know um uh, uh they are in student visa and then they work for a company and then they change their visa so this is a pattern that usually we see and this is a very good one to follow and this is a safe one if you were to come here after uh working in india for some time that's also an option um you know right now there are a lot of jobs that are going offshore right so if your company is willing to send you that's also a great option uh but of course i think the competition i mean competition is there everywhere whether you're coming from your company or whether you're whether you're trying to pursue it from your um from after college there is competition everywhere so um you have to fight it out and uh, us is definitely a very great place to come and pursue your higher dreams thank you ma'am for that insightful information the next question is um due to the pandemic many have lost their jobs and everything has become online so what are your observations for the next 5 years and how should we prepare for this inevitable shift um so i would you know instead of uh, fixing on the problem of the pandemic i think we should focus on what are the lessons that the pandemic is teaching us right how to deal one big lesson i think that we all everyone worldwide has learned is how to deal how to be cautious and how to deal with the next pandemic right how well prepared we should be how well equipped we should be and how informed we must be uh we the healthcare department be the healthcare how ready they are to face a challenge like this and um, when it come to businesses how they should prepare and uh, how well you should keep your in uh, citizen informed your citizens informed and that's the government's job uh prepare them to face a crisis like this and how you how the schools should function how the educational institutions should function if a crisis like this comes 
all of these are learnings for us after this pandemic, right? Um, definitely the pandemic has had a huge impact on the economy and uh, definitely this is going to take years for it to recover. And for some sectors, definitely like uh, uh, some sectors like, um, sorry, some sectors like um, um, tourism and the entertainment industry, these will definitely take much longer to recover because they are the worst affected. Uh, the rest may recover sooner. So this, um, it, 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 so the students, so we as students, you guys, students need to understand how do you need to pursue the, pursue your path in, in a situation like this. Now over here, I, I guess the same with you, almost, almost all around the world, the education has gone online. Um, and there are, the challenges come with that. Um, uh, and it is not easy. I know a few of my friends' daughter, uh, uh, friends' children who finished 12th year, they had got admission to colleges um, and their academic year was supposed to start in 2020, but few of them opted to take a gap year. Uh, there's a concept of, I don't know if you all know about it, in US there's a concept of gap year. So they just use that year to pursue their other interests or they, they um, they learn more about whatever whatever field they are in. They they just learn by themselves. They enroll in some other small universities or do a self-learning. They use that time to enrich themselves and then they go back. So many of them chose that because they didn't want to do the online learning during the pandemic. So these are the options. So uh, definitely pandemic has um, changed our ways of thinking and many things that we took for granted as are not granted anymore, right? So um, it's unfortunate, but we will find a way through now that the vaccines are here. Uh, we There is the light at the end of the tunnel and hopefully we will all recover from this strong and uh, uh, strong and safe. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. We indeed need to be prepared to face the challenges and obstacles in life. Ma'am, your next question is, when NRA students get back to India for higher education, they often find it difficult to cope with the lifestyle and system. Ma'am, what's your advice on this? So um, this is what, like I, I mentioned this in my speech, I guess, but I'll, I'll touch upon it again. Definitely the, the culture is very different, right? Now, for, in my case, my example, I was in Salala all my life. I didn't know the world outside because I was born there. I was raised there until 12th, until 17, I was there. And then all my trips to India were just vacation trips. So I barely stayed in India. Um, and definitely not Bombay. I'm from Kerala. So the only place for vacation I used to go is to Kerala. And Bombay was definitely not in the list. And uh, uh, I was just picked up from Salala and put in Bombay. Uh, it's a very happening place, um, Bombay. It's like the New York of India, they say, right? It was very tough. The language was so different. The society was very different. The culture, the ways of thinking of the students, the people that I met, everything is so different. And suddenly I had to pay my way. It was like I was dropped in an ocean and I was trying to swim. Uh, but like I said, while swimming in the ocean, you there are these factors that- Student you, dance the, I think we need to hear. There are these, um, you know, while we swim in, swim in this ocean, there are these, um, uh, uh, waves that uh, take us, right? So if the, if the current is flowing in our direction, then we are able to swim better, right? So as an analogy, I'll just give, I'll just say that these currents that help us to swim, those currents are your friends, your good friends that you need to have and your instinct, like I said, and all the other qualities that I mentioned about believing in yourself, about being, uh, you know, uh, have, having that, that grit and that determination to achieve something uh, and always ask questions, right? So that's one thing, right? Many of us think that 
when we ask some questions, we are being judged. Um, there is nothing like that. There is nothing of that sort. You should be you should be fearless and ask the right questions to the right people, and that's how you pave your way, right? So yeah, so these are the main factors and all the success factors that I mentioned before. Um, all of these put together, I think you can survive. It will be hard. It is not going to be easy. It will be hard. It was hard for me, but um, those factors kept me uh, put together, and I was able to. I was able to succeed. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. We indeed need to adapt to life situations and focus on our goals. Ma'am, your next question is. Most often, what our parents think of us and what we think of ourselves do clash. And usually it is their will that wins and we have to follow their will. Ma'am, what's your comment on that? Um, this is a very tricky uh, situation, right? A tricky question. <laughs> um, now, one thing you have to all understand is parents always wish the best out of you. That goes without saying. But yes, there are situations where our ideas could clash. And um, I think the foremost thing here is to understand what you want, right? So if your parents are encouraging you to choose a particular field and you don't want that field, um, but you want something else, then you need to understand what made you choose that other field, right? You should have done your own research and your own self, uh, self inspection or retrospect of yourself. You need to have a good idea about the why part. Why do I want to do this and not what my parents are saying? And you need to understand that more than anyone else because your parents will not know. You will, know, you will need to know. So do the amount of research, see right now, the world is in our fingertip. See, I'm talking to all of you sitting here in a different time zone. The time here is 8 a.m. And you're all in the Middle East. The world is just in a fingertip, right? Information is out there. You go and you do your research. You talk to people. You talk to um, your alumni, the, your folks who have graduated out of school and who is probably in that particular field. Gather information and have a good conversation with your, with your parents. You tell them, look, this is what I want. And I'm really good at this. I like doing this. I'm passionate about this and I want to do this. Um, trust me, I can do this. Believe in me. These are the reasons why I want to do this. Write it down. Take a bit of, take a piece of paper and write down the 10 reasons why you think you want to do it. This why part is very important because you cannot just um, talk in, um, what do you call be fancy about it, right? You have to be realistic. Everything has to be practical, right? You can't just be in your, you cannot live in your whims and fancies. So you have to be realistic. So you write down what you want. And I'm sure any parent will understand what you're saying and will adhere to that, right? I, I'll share a, a short, quick example from my life. And this is not about me. This is about my younger brother. His name is Justin. He, um, I haven't taken permission from him to share his story, but uh, that's okay. He'll be fine, I guess. Um, he was also a student of my same engineering college in Bombay. Uh, he was also in 12th. He also finished uh, his LKG uh, from LKG to 12th in Indian School Salala. After that, he went to the same college as me in Bombay, but he never enjoyed engineering. He wasn't happy. Um, but the decision was that let him do engineering, but he just wasn't happy there. And he used to tell us about it, but um, you know, we were like, it is a professional course. Um, you, there will be struggle. I mean, no, no professional course is easy for that matter. Anything, any professional course, any course you pick, there is a struggle. There is no, there is no shortcut. There is never a shortcut to success, right? So, but he just wasn't ready for this. Um, and then uh, uh, he managed somehow out of engineering and he took up a job at Wipro uh, and he was studying there. I mean, sorry, he was working there. And I don't think he was really happy with it. 
And after one or two years, he, by then I got married and I was here. I came, I got married by the way, right after engineering and I came here to the US and he was working in Wipro then. And then uh, he, one fine day, he told my dad that he wants to become a pilot. Um, so my dad was like, okay, so what about all these years of learning that you did and all the money that we spent? He said, he understands that. He was very convinced of becoming a pilot. And he said, he just wants to do it. Um, and uh, he, it took, including me, uh, remember this, including me, I discouraged him saying that back then I didn't have the maturity, blame on that. <laughs> I was only 22, 23. Uh, but I also discouraged him saying that, that this is not something that's practical. You cannot just drop what you just did and you know, go to an entirely different career. But he was so convinced about himself. He did the research. He told us where exactly what he wants to do. Um, my dad said, fine, we'll take a loan because it cost a lot of money. Took a loan. He was on scholarship. I mean, uh, took a loan. He did his pilot, uh, the coaching for pilot he, he, the, th through Indigo. So the coaching was done through Indigo. And he had come to US for flying lessons. He was here for almost uh, nine months. Not, not, in my, not in my state. He was in Phoenix. He was in Arizona. And then he went back and now he is a successful pilot at Indigo. Um, so things can happen and he's a living example. Uh, all you need, he, he was so convinced he had the conviction and he had the determination that he will excel in that. And uh, that's how he emerged and uh, his, his base is Cochin. So if at all you're flying Indigo out of Cochin, look out for the pilot. His name is uh, Justin and that's my brother and he's uh, your alumni of our school. Yeah, hope that answers the question. Yes, ma'am, it's very true that we need to do our research and talk about these things. The next question that we have for you is how has your alma mater helped you in your success journey? So, um, like I said before, you know, uh, all the values that uh, the school taught, um, I talked about how important it is to believe. Uh, I mean, I talked quite a bit of it in my, in my talk, so I'm not going there again, of how to respect everyone's beliefs and irrespective of the gender or the politic or political views that they're coming with or the religious faith that they're following or the sexual orientation that they're following um, or the culture they're coming from or the race that they're coming from. Treat everyone with the same dignity, right? That is one thing that's one, one such an important lesson that was I was uh, taught. And of course, there are a lot of other things. Um, one thing is punctuality. I remember we all used to get penalized. I think even now you probably get, might be getting penalized for coming late for assembly. Um, so in understanding that important of uh, importance of being punctual. 7.30 means 7.30 a.m. At 7.30 a.m. is when our assembly started. Um, it's so important to, or 7.20, sorry. I think it was 7.20. Um, so important to learn the importance of punctuality. That, that, take, that takes you a long way. Uh, be it in, you know, not just in your college, in your, in your office, when you attend meetings, punctuality. Hard being, you know, working hard towards your goal being disciplined, uh, you know, respecting others and uh, being patient, being kind, um, being polite. All of this, all of these qualities are immense qualities that my teachers taught me in school. And uh, I am what I am today because of them, definitely. Yes, ma'am, oh, schools do, uh, do uh, teach us these small values that we uh, inculcate ourselves. The next question for you is, what are your greatest failures and what did they teach you? So I believe I already answered this in my, uh, my uh, talk, the, the, uh, the time when I decided to quit uh, my engineering because of that one exam that I failed three times. Uh, that for me is my biggest failure in my life. But right now I look back at it and I laugh about it. I don't see that as a failure anymore. I'm like, really? I, 
I decided to quit because of that subject. I, I couldn't, I cannot digest that fact right now after all, after 20 years. But back then I was really in a deep mess. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the lesson is definitely how you pick yourself up after the failure, right? Uh, how you uh, engage yourself, how do you, um, you should not let that failure define you or take control of you. That is what it is, right? So. Uh, I think as long as you have that defined, you're good. And uh, that's the biggest lesson. What comes after failure? That is most important. Failure happens to everybody. You can fail. Your friends can fail. Everybody can fail. And it's the failure can happen at any point in your life. Okay. And you may succeed great in your school. You probably will succeed great in your college. But maybe at workplace, you may fail one day. Right. You will, you're probably looking for a job. You're taking job interviews. You probably one interview that you attended and you're so sure that you're going to get it. It has happened to me many times. I'm like, uh, I was interviewed by Amazon and I was so sure I performed so well, uh, you know, Amazon, right? Um, uh, the headquarters of Amazon is here in Seattle. I performed so well and I was like, I was sure, sure I'm going to get this job. I didn't get it. So that's a failure, but I'm not going to sit and sulk about it okay, maybe that is not meant for me. You know, I learn from what I did uh, and then I move on and uh, you, that's how you just move on in life. Well said, ma'am. We should keep that in our minds. Ma'am, the next question is, what drives you to keep going when it's really tough? What drives me to keep going when it's really tough? Um... When it's really tough, I think one of the key things that I do is I try to remember what my goal is, right? I try to think of my ultimate goal and I try to keep thinking why I wanted to do it, how, you know, how passionate I am to achieve that goal. So that goal, I, I go back to my goal each time when things, you know, keep getting tough and I keep trying to keep my focus on my goal thinking that the path is probably not easy but I have to get there so perseverance definitely is one thing right you don't give up so this this is this entails this means it's perseverance and then of course I talk to when the going gets really tough you just talk to some good people you have around right they're always there to help you and guide you along so talk to them and uh, I guess these things will can keep you motivated and uh, um, keep you strong till you achieve what you want to. Thank you, ma'am, for that wonderful advice. Our next question to you would be, what are the values one has to keep as a key to success? I like, I already touched this in my uh, talk, so I will just go through it once again. I talked about be believing in yourself, uh, loving yourself, knowing what you want is so important. Knowing what you don't want is also very important, right? Um, and that's not easy to understand what you want and what you don't want. It takes time. Sometimes uh, figuring out these things take time and that is okay. But still have patience on yourself. Be kind to yourself. Don't be hard on yourself, right? It's okay. It's not the end of the world. Trust yourself, be nice to yourself, be kind to yourself. And um, definitely, uh, I'm sure that, um, so that's about believing in yourself. And then of course, perseverance and uh, keeping that focus till the end of uh, it, not to give up, never give up um, and never, uh, you know, be scared about trying new things, opportunities, and always remember, take risks in your life and always remember you may fail, but um that's all part of the deal that's all part of the package right uh you cannot ha just have any any path to success is never easy there will be there it is a roller coaster die uh, it's a roller coaster ride there will be ups there'll be downs you pick yourself up and you go you uh, you bar yourself from negativity you stay focused on your goals these are the things i guess that was a very good point to note, ma'am. We should always be kind to ourselves and have patience. Ma'am, the next question that we have for you is, how can we focus on a single dream and make it a reality? So 
single dream, definitely like, you know, again, I've, I think I've touched this, but um, writing things down definitely makes a huge difference. So document everything, what you want. Like, like I said, now you want tomorrow, you want to do something new. What are the steps you will take? You do your own research. You start documenting things, right? There is so much information in, in the web right now. Uh, you are free to go and uh, explore that, uh, research yourself and document these things and keep your dream focused. Don't digress, right? Uh, and you won't digress if you write these things down and go over these topics every day of your life. And as you make progress in different steps of your um, uh, of, of your journey, you mark them down, right? And write down the challenges that you're facing so that you won't forget them. So these, these ways, and, the, and of course, plus a whole bunch of things that I told earlier, this way you can, you can stay focused on one thing uh, because the moment you document something, you won't lose track of it. So that, that, could, be, that could be the way to go forward. Thank you, ma'am. Your interesting points indeed need to be imbibed by all of us. Ma'am, suppose I'm a commerce student, but after some time, I realize that my passion is something entirely different. In that case, is it advisable to drop everything and chase my new passion? Yes, it is totally advisable to do that. But before you do that, you need to understand what your, why you're doing it, right? This why is very important. You need to understand why you're doing it and uh, what are the, what are the benefits that you're seeing in this new passion or what are the goodnesses that you're seeing in this new passion versus the one that you were already following? Um, and once you understand the why part, and of course, again, the same thing, you do your research, you be very well informed of what, why, of your choices, and then you make the decision. And there is absolutely no harm in changing. Uh, I don't see any harm. As long as you're self-aware of why you're doing it and wow, you know, what encourages you, what draws you more, what does the other passion draw you more, why does it do, all of these answers you need to have very clear in your mind. Uh, and what are the job prospects of choosing the other option, right? Um, it has to be a realistic thing, right? Like, like I said before, we cannot uh, live in, uh, we cannot just dream. Dreaming is easy, but it, it has to be realistic. So uh, see what are the opportunities that this new passion or your new goals or your new career change is going to give you. Understand that deep within and uh, then definitely, I don't see any harm why you shouldn't go for it. Thank you, ma'am. Your words of insight indeed need to be noted by all of us. Ma'am, your next question is, what are the internal and external forces that prevent us from chasing our dreams? Um, definitely, like I said, one of the, one of the, one of the strong forces that can prevent you is negativity, right? Um, and I already mentioned in my talk how you handle that, uh, how you need to ignore it, right? Um, you, you can never please everybody on this planet as long as you're not harming anybody, as long as you're not um, um, causing any distress for anybody on your path to your uh, fulfilling your dream, it is fine. Um, so figure out a way to to fend off this negativity and uh, stay focused, stay focused on your positive thoughts and always understand that um, you are the fighter for yourself. You are the only one who would fight for your own dreams. No one else will. No one understands your aspirations as well as you do. So, uh, even your parents will not understand that. That's, um, that's something that I've learned. You know, they may also not get it. You yourself, your mind knows it the best. Of course, you can convey to your parents, but that's a different thing that requires communication and you tell them. But there is no one who understands in the world, um, no one who understands you more than yourself in the entire world, right? 
So believe in yourself and fend off all these uh, negativity. These those, those negativity is one big thing. And of course, failure shouldn't uh, um, dampen your. I mean. Um, dampen your spirits you you need to get up from what from every failure that you see and you need to move forward and what are the other negative forces uh, and self-doubts right uh, internal forces, another one could be self-doubt. You're not sure of something and that's okay. You'll always be, never be, you won't get all the answers right away, like I said. So the self-doubt is something that uh, you need to uh, conquer and uh, move forward, uh, you know. And of course, all the other rest of the points that I mentioned, I think that can. Okay, uh, uh, Julie, your principal, Mr. Patanka. Hello, uh, sir. Nice talking to you. And uh, I think the questions have been done before. They just go for the formal uh, word of thanks. I just thought of, you know, just talking to you for a minute or two. Uh, sure. Yeah, at the outset, really, I wanted to thank on behalf of all the students and staff of Indian School Salala for giving your valuable time and that that too very early morning. And I'm sure uh, Saturday is the weekend for you all. And, uh -huh. uh, you, you know, like that itself shows that, you know, how much you love to uh, uh, our school. Secondly, you know, I'm very happy to know that you a graduation and engineering from Bombay. Uh, I'm I born and brought up in Bombay. So, oh. so like when the moment you started talking about Bombay, you know, I was so happy to know because <laughs> that's what many times. Uh, when I just come to Salala, my some staff were asking me, how do you find uh, Salala, you know, compared to Bombay? Because our Bombay life is uh, moving around the clock. Yes. Uh, by the way, which, you know, which college you were in? I was in Vivekananda's uh, visit, Vivekananda's education okay. system. Chembur. Okay. Chembur, okay. I was living in VGTI. VGTI oh. You know, oh uh, 19 years I was in VGTI. Oh. Uh, opposite to VGTI, there is a Don Bosco. Uh -huh. so, yeah, I studied there and then opposite wow. to that, there's a Khalsa college where I did my graduation and postgraduate. Oh, I see. So in that uh, location, I was Yeah, I know VJTI. We had a few friends there. It's a VJTI visit. We are always in that, you know, the top colleges yeah. in yes, uh, yes. Bombay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, it's very nice uh, to know. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I just thought of just taking a chance because once... Uh, uh, they if they finished and everybody will uh, definitely will log off. So I think it's better to talk to you. Thank you very much. Uh, definitely, I will be in touch with you always. Uh, in fact, uh, now I'm going to you know this recording. I may put it to all the students later on because your your discussion, your expressions, your question answers are really a lot of learning. The students will get it. So that's sure. matter because basically my idea is to having this particular session. To ensure that the students are learning, you know, from their uh, uh, alumni. That's that is what it it's all about. Because see, uh, when I'm talking about the VJTA, uh, you'll find that getting admission in VJTA is a tough, you know. The yes. VJTA principal son couldn't get admission there, you know. So yeah. this is what it is. That it's a very tough uh, uh, procedures they follow, and people says if anybody uh, passed from VJTA is bound to have a a successful life after his uh, graduation. So, mm -hmm. like, uh, so I'm coming back, you know, with these kids uh, coming back and sharing to the students. You know, that's uh, you know, billion dollar experience the people will carry, and that is basically myself and our president, Dr. Jamil sir, and our IT chairman, Mr. Yusuf sir. Our dream to see that you know, maximum uh, students will get it onto the platform because. Normally, you'll find that, Julie, you know, when people talk alumni, you know, everybody thinks it is a fundraising something initiatives are there. But, you know, our vision is altogether different. We wanted to see many students come and address to the students because you will give a lot of your sharing of your experience and successful life what you are uh, having at the moment and how, what are the ups and downs, what you had it. That's a lifetime learning. They'll get it. Once again, thank you very much. Nice talking to you. But definitely we'd like to rope, rope in you for the more and more such programs. In fact, I'm more happy to, you know, like to take your brother Justin sometime onto the uh, uh, platform where he definitely. would be able to share. Yeah, yeah I, I'll do that. I'll tell uh, Parvinder or, or Pony Ma'am to be in touch so that he can be one of the speakers sometime. 
because sure. his his lifestyle his success story is different you know so mm -hmm. definitely you will be uh, right to give all those things thank you very much thanks sure my pleasure thank you so much for having me and uh, uh, just curious how many students did we have today joined when you i think uh, 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 it's we are having around 145 147 but mm -hmm. you know uh, 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 i think there are exams are on so you know oh, there yeah. are a few yeah the few students uh, me uh, miss they may be thinking, you know, this program will come telecast later to maybe after the right. They can always watch. Can that. Yeah. I'll do that. I'll do that because uh, I had a very uh, selected crowd that is of grade tenth and twelfth. Right. Yeah, and because I think that uh, your talks were really uh, ideal for them because their tenth is in the verge of taking decisions and twelfth as well. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And if I could get the Zoom link, uh, the record that will be—is it something that yeah, you yeah. can? Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. Mostly, I'll try to put it on the YouTube. And okay, that'll be good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because yeah. Our, our my experience is that whenever we had a program, you'll find that you know, and then again matching those timings. Sometimes it is not possible, in spite of you know you having a you know a diet uh, uh, feel to just attend the session. But due yeah. to some yeah. commitment, you cannot. But I saw even our alumni program last time, uh, it's reached 2,500 plus. You know, when we oh, started, yeah. it was three, 300 yeah. something. Like, uh, probably the student must be thinking, Prince, again, you know, you may put it onto the YouTube. So I'll do uh, that. I'll do that. Yeah. So, yeah, it is It is good. You know, it will be there as a record and, you know, people yeah, can. Yeah. I'll do that. In fact, there are a lot of people, you know, I, I told my daughter, uh, I do not know whether she attended, but I, I'm going to just talk to her and tell her, to just you know just see because this is what our learning one what one can get it sure thank you thank you julie we sure. i can uh, uh, definitely sometime uh, i'll speak to you on definitely. Uh, four or something thank is you thank uh, you parvinder sir there puni ma'am all of you are there yeah they are puni ma'am i could able to see on my screen yes uh, yeah, do, yeah very much uh, there once, julie what i'll do yes, once sir, the, how are you? <laughs> yeah bye and there nice to you <laughs> parvinder sir one minute once the session yeah, is sir. done so we'll put put our Julie on for some time. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, Julie. Yeah. Yes. Uh, students, please go ahead. Thank you, sir and ma'am. That was truly an enlightening and enriching session. It makes us realize that if we feel there's something out there that we are supposed to be doing, and if we have the passion for it, then stop wishing and just do it. So let us gain the confidence to nurture our dreams every day. A strong dream will empower us to make bold decisions and follow our hearts. Once again, thank you, ma'am, for that exciting interaction with us. Now, may I request Elsa to propose a word of thanks. Thank you, Jerina. If you really want to fly, harness your power to your passion. Trust your heart and success will come to you. Good evening, one and all. It's my privilege to propose the vote of thanks for this interactive session. First of all, with deep reverence, I thank His Majesty Sultan Hetham bin Tariq Al Said for his benevolence and generosity. Next, I'd like to place on record our heartfelt gratitude to the speaker of the day, Mrs. Julie Anthony, former student of Indian School Salala, for having spared her valuable time to interact with us. Ma'am, today we had the opportunity to hear your thoughts, and this is surely going to encourage us in our future events. Thank you, ma'am. My deepest gratitude to the President of the School Management Committee, Dr. Sayed Essen Jamil, other esteemed members of the School Management Committee, and our beloved principal, Mr. Deepa Patankar, for coming up with such an initiative, ensuring that the expertise and the experience of our alumni will be a great source of inspiration for the students of grade 10th and 12th. We anticipate that many more such enriching programs will be organized in the coming months. My sincere thanks to the assistant vice principal, teachers, the IT team, and the conveners of Jayanj 2021 for their continuous support and guidance. Special thanks to all my friends for sending us thoughtful questions for making this session very interesting. I thank the students of grade 10th and 12th for joining this interactive session. And I do believe that you might have got some valuable tips to chase your dreams as I have got some. 
On behalf of Indian School Salala, once again, I thank everyone present here. Thank you and good night.